Most of us feel like we're not doing enough. It could be in different areas. We were not fast enough, smart enough, haven't done enough, accomplished enough, haven't worked hard enough, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Oh, for other people, we say things like, oh, come on, you're a human being, not a human doing. It's OK. Or you know what? What you've done there is perfectly fine. You don't need to do any more. Just relax. Take it easy. But when we look inward, it's a whole different story, right? We have a different standard for ourselves than we do for everybody around us, friends, family, others, right? Inside, we have a pretty high standard of what we have to accomplish. How many people here have a to-do list? OK, just about everybody, OK. How many people have more than one? So there's a personal to-do list, a work to-do list, a potentially a New Year's resolution to-do list, maybe a design to-do list, bucket list to-do list. I mean, right? OK, <laughs> Lisa, great. Um, so what happens to those lists, right? I mean, we knock things off, obviously. That's why we have them. But does it ever go away, or does it, do we just add to it? Uh, and, and, and I mean, how do you feel about you know, getting that stuff done? Eventually, you want to get it done, but in my case, it just keeps growing. And as soon as I close one off, I just add four or five more on because somehow I feel like I need to get more done or I think of more stuff, right? Who's familiar with the vanishing point? Nobody? Yeah, okay, great. So the vanishing point is that point off in the distance where the road seems to come together, right? All of a sudden it looks like it comes to a point or where you have two um, railroad tracks that come together, right? That's the vanishing point. It's a point you can never reach, right? You can keep chasing all around, but it always seems to be in front of you. And how much stress comes with all those to-do lists and all those to-dos? Um, I'll tell you quickly, a heck of a lot, right? We all know this. I mean, it, it's not a secret. Uh, everywhere you look, reduce your stress, right? Um, your mind is constantly, constantly working. And if you don't realize it's working, it's constantly running some kind of a pattern in a program, which of course translates into your body. So if it's stressed, stress causes anxiety. We know that too. Right? And even if you think, oh, this will just motivate me, it's actually anxiety that's translating back to your body. Can we get rid of all of stress in the world? Probably not. Um, but we know it's running in the background. We know it's wearing itself. I just recently finished a project, uh, just a task, really, that took three weeks and seven minutes. Can you imagine how long, or can you guess how long the actual task took? Anybody? That's it, right. Thanks for my honey bunny over there. Okay, yes, it took seven minutes, but it was three weeks of thinking about it and stressing about it and berating myself for not having done it because I had a to-do list this long and I just couldn't get to it, right? Stress is always there, right? So, so, so what am I saying? Gee, Lenka, that's very nice. Uh, thanks for all of your comments. We knew all that. Um, are you saying we shouldn't make any lists? No, of course not. Not saying we shouldn't make any lists. What I'm saying is maybe we need to look at the level of stress that these lists and some of this work that we take on to, you know, does to us. That level of perfection is having to do this, right? Um, the turning point for me came when we bought ourselves a cottage, okay? Um, we bought ourselves a cottage in, and it, our first summer was summer of 2017. It's beautiful. It's on Georgian Bay. Um, our friend Lee calls it the million dollar view. Uh, we have Lakers and we have, um, even the Coast Guard comes by. We have sailboats, it's just beautiful. The, the, the terrain is beautiful. Cottage itself, not so much. Um, it's, it's nice enough, but it, you know, it was missing things like uh, an outdoor shower. It had an outdoor shower, not an indoor shower. So. That's okay in the middle of summer, not always great because it was pretty dilapidated and the neighbors were right there with their windows so you felt a little exposed. Um, and when we first walked into it, we actually tripped because the cottage was not level. <laughs> it had been sinking on the one side. Um, so there was lots to do. And of course, we had excitement, absolute excitement with the cottage. Oh my goodness, it's gonna be great and relaxing. Man, are we gonna have fun, right? 
And then we started with, okay, what do we need to fix? So now we had two places to maintain, right? And where I found that we were going, and it took me a while to catch on to this pattern, that over the two summers, I started to observe that we would get something done, and we'd say, you know what? It's the cottage. That's good enough right there, right? That's good enough. Or, as we like to say it in our family, you know what? It's the cottage Donna's horse. So I know that sounds a little ludicrous, but when I tell you that Donna's horse, Donna was as Brad's mom, was Brad's mom, and when, as, a, as a young lady, uh, she had a horse that she loved, and the horse's name was, can you guess? Good enough, right? So in our family, we just say, you know what, it's the cottage, good enough. But what also started to happen was that we sometimes in the house, right, we would be doing something that could take us 16 hours and we'd already put in 10 and we're like, do we want to put in six more hours, et cetera. Well, is it good enough? Why don't we say it's the cottage, even though we were in the house. So it started to seep into our other, other areas of our lives, right? The cottage itself, uh, we've got an indoor, indoor shower now. We had the bathroom, indoor shower. It's more or less level. There's a few inches still there, but it's sitting on a big rock, and you know, short of bringing in a bulldozer to pull that rock out, we're gonna live with it, so we're pretty good. Um, hey, it's the cottage, right? It's good enough. It's Donna's horse. So I thought to myself, okay, well, if we can relax and get ourselves a little bit more time and a little bit of, you know, kindness to ourselves when we're at the cottage. What if I could apply some of this, right, to my other areas? Like, what's wrong with not being completely perfect and stressing myself out to that last little bit, an ounce of energy, right? There's really nothing wrong with it. So I started to look at work or home. Okay, so I've done, you know, two hours of cleaning. Any of you that have cleaned your house, which is all of you, you know you could put in actually days of cleaning and still feel there's areas that need to be scrubbed some more, right? So maybe two or three hours of cleaning is good enough, right? It's all just gonna get dirty anyway, right? I'm working on a work, work stuff. I used to drive myself crazy, and honestly, sometimes I still do, depends. But I work now, okay, you know, is it good enough now? Do I still need to color everything? And of course, we're coloring online, but you know, is it that color okay? Do I need another shade of blue for that slide? It's probably good enough, right? It's Donna's horse, it's fine, it's fine. So that to me was a bit of a turning point for me. And my, my focus now is to sort of bring that attitude towards myself and bring it into 2020 and continue to evolve it. Now, for, for some of you that are self-identified professionists in the room, I know you know this, but just to kind of make sure, am I saying don't strive for excellence? No. Thank you. I did not plant her, but she's getting 10 bucks from me after. <laughs> um, no, what I'm saying is, here's the thing, right? Well done is here. Perfection is probably another inch or two but it takes you almost as much time as it took you to get there. Is that time well spent? Is that vanishing point gonna be found? Or are you just gonna chase it for a long time at ridiculous amounts of stress when really well done was all you really needed to do, right? Um, I spoke to an 81-year-old woman just recently because I thought, you know, maybe she can give me some ideas on what she's done. Well, <laughs> she said, well, She's 81. When I retired at 57, I had this big long bucket list, plus things I was gonna do around the house, organize my photos, paint this, do that, do that, da, 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 da. I said, well, what's going on with this list? She said, well, we got a few things done, but it just keeps getting longer. She's 81, okay? And I, I mean, she may live for another 20 years, but come on, right? So she's still chasing this list and these perfections at 81. So at what point? Do we say, I'm good enough, it's good enough, right? A question you'll answer for yourself, and I'm sure it's situational, but where I will be is sitting at the cottage, <laughs> right? Relaxing, my mostly level cottage, my mostly level cottage, 
relaxing um, and putting my focus energy into imperfections, right? Because that's not a lot of times that's just as beautiful as everything else. And I'll be thinking Donna's horse. So if I can ask you to virtually raise your glass or really raise your glass, and it's 2020, the year of Donna's horse. Thank <laughs> you.